Hi everyone, it's Peter. Uh, I'm back with another video, long overdue video, but I'm, I'm back, <laughs> I guess. Oh, uh, well, yeah, how are you? How are you? I hope you're all doing great. I am doing okay, I guess. Um, good in some things, not too good in others, but um, I'm here to talk about this new piece and other things too. Let's start talking about this piece. So I drew uh, uh, this fan art for Finn from um, Dan Machi. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know the entire name in Japanese. What it's how to pick up girls in dungeons? I think that's the name of the anime. Um, not one of the best animes out there. I must admit, but he's my favorite character in the entire series. And I don't think he gets enough screen time, but that's a story for another day. But I really like him as a character and I decided that I want to paint or draw more characters that I like. I've always um, painted females, yeah, for the most part. Like growing up, when I started learning about art, um, I, we were taught art at school and we always had to draw females because I went to a school that only had girls, so we only drew girls. It was just amazing. And um, <laughs> I like drawing guys too, you know? But I don't think my guys look like guys because I still have that drawing females in me. <laughs> but I do try. And I think the more I do it, the better I get, I think. But this piece was very fun to paint. Um, I've been using my new painting technique, which instead of doing line art like everyone else, I don't do line art. I just do my sketch. And I generally love how my sketches look. When I do line art, I think it looks stiff. I think it looks unnatural and it doesn't feel like me. And that's probably because I don't know how to do line art. But I also feel that I'm a very messy person. So anything that's too neat is just not my forte. So I like sketchy look. I like the, the um, I just like how it looks so kind of haphazard in terms of the line work. But I don't know, I feel that it gives it character. And it maybe if I could find a way how to do line art in this way, but make it, you know, professional looking. I'm not sure if that will ever happen. And to be honest, I don't really care if it does, because I do like this process where I would do a sketch, right? I'll do a sketch and then I'll put the base color under the sketch, lower the opacity of the sketch layer, and then I will duplicate the sketch layer because I still want to see the sketch <laughs> at some point. But what I'll do, duplicate the sketch layer and hide one of the sketch layers and then flatten another sketch layer that I, I lower the opacity for onto the color. And then I will paint on one layer. So I kind of have a one layer painting technique for the most part. I don't do everything on one layer, but majority of the things I do is on one layer. So I think I get the best of both worlds. I get to play with the line art because, well, not line art, the sketch layer <laughs> and merge it into the painting, you know? So that's, oh yeah, you saw it right there where I showed the sketch at some point and then I hide it again to see how it looks to see if I'm still following it. Sometimes I can get lost in painting this way. Like I, I like the sketch at the beginning, but then in the painting process, it changes so much. Um, it changes, it starts to not look too much like the sketch. And in order to remember what the sketch looks like, I have the sketch there so I can say, ah, yeah, I think I went too far here, or I think I like the sketch better in this way, or I think I like the painting better than the sketch, so I'll keep that. So that happens, and I think it's good to have that sketch layer as a reference, but also to use it in the painting, because um, sometimes I do like it. I do like seeing the black lines, and I do like painting over the black lines and merging it into the paint whenever I can. 
And I do think it helps me to um, give me control. So when I painted, when I started learning how to paint digitally and I learned how to paint without using sketches, I don't feel like I had that much control over what I did. And then when I started to transition into doing more cell, um, yeah. So when I transitioned to doing some more cell shading, I realized that I don't like too much control. <laughs> And I don't like being such a stickler for painting inside the lines. I was never good at coloring. <laughs> I always I always colored outside the lines. So I do like this approach a lot and it helps me to paint people better. So when I used to just draw my sketches and then I would hide the sketches completely and just paint with the bare color or without any sketch. And I will sometimes reveal the sketch to see where I'm going and then hide the sketch again to make sure I'm painting it right. I don't like that process because it's too loose for me and I don't have too much control over what I paint. Or I do, but I think seeing lines gives me so much more control. And being able to paint over those lines when I don't feel that it looks good here I, I think that gives me more control. See, I'm drawing some more lines around his head just to make it a little bit darker. And yeah, I do like that look. I do like that look. So I think I have a mix between um, doing line work and making it look a little bit realistic in terms of the way I paint. So I used to paint more realism for people I hate it. I don't think I'll ever go back. <laughs> I used to do the realism thing and if I if I had stuck with it I would have been so much better but I just didn't like the process I wanted to be more I wanted it to be more like an anime thing but then I also don't like painting I don't like drawing or rendering pieces in the anime style it's just it's just too the rules are just too hard hard and fast for me and probably not for other people were good at it but for me I just felt that I don't want to do pretty line work <laughs> it's just annoying I want to be flashy with my um, brushes I want to just paint here and there and not care too much about lines but I do want to see the lines when I'm painting <laughs> and I love painting over lines so that's my dilemma and that's my dilemma solved yeah good stuff so with this piece i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed the position um in terms of the pose uh i'm getting a little bit better with poses in terms of conceptualizing poses and um actualizing those poses in my pieces so wasn't really good with that i in general well i think everyone needs references don't get me wrong so I do use references, but for these references, I made it my own. Or I not made it my own, but I made my own references. I think that's just the best. I would really ideally like to get one of those action, those figure drawing models that are able to um, be put in a variety of poses. Um, I think ideally I would want something like that so that I don't have to set up like a phone camera to take myself but I think that's the best way because um, it's hard to find pictures online <laughs> of a pose I want <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, I know what pose I want so I can you know pose <laughs> and take myself but mm, it's not always easy but I did that with this pose it kind of worked out good but I'm, I've been learning that I'm getting much better at not necessarily needing to have a pose right off the bat like a reference photo right off the bat I can I can draw a pose <laughs> out of my head and I was like ah oh, yeah it's something like this that I want and then I get reference photos based off that pose that I've sketched out and yeah I think that's progress <laughs> I'm not good at drawing people <laughs> I'm not the best and that's a whole lot of progress for me a whole lot of progress for me so yeah I really like this pose I've always thought of this pose in my head when I'm I'm just thinking about random pictures that I could possibly draw or just random things and then this pose has always come to my head for this particular character <laughs> yeah so I just had to I had to paint him I had to stop my Enneagram series just for him <laughs> 
<laughs> and paint him in this pose. So I do think I'm gonna get rid of this hair. Or did I already get rid of the hair? I've been talking <laughs> so long. I'm not sure if I got rid of the hair. Nah, I think I already got rid of it. Yes, I did. So I actually regret doing this here. <laughs> I thought I liked it. But looking back at this piece, I think one of the sketches that I done before with this hair, I think I liked it better. And I didn't know that I would like it better when I did this. I thought I hated it. And I did this here uh, uh, um, to, I guess, to make it look better. But now that I'm looking at the hair, I'm like, nah, this is not it. <laughs> but it will stay. It won't change, unfortunately. That is the case. Okay. Yeah. So, apart from that, I did have quite a very good time painting just the, the clothes. And I don't know. I think this, this is a therapeutic process for me. Um, particularly painting right there <laughs> right there on his clothes it's just so fun it's so fun i'm not doing too much trying to do less um, excessive rendering because i think that just looks so yeah it looks so much so amateur <laughs> i guess um at least for me it does and it's it's progress when i'm able to do less but then that's still it doing less in terms of the rendering not putting too much i don't know too much highlights here and there too much shading and it just looks so so good to me but what i really love with him is his eyes i just love how i made his eyes blue <laughs> i love blue blue is my favorite color so i really like doing his eyes that way i don't know i think i could have done more with his eyes but we'll go on to see how I utilize some more blue in this piece. Okay, so let's talk about something else apart from this painting and something else that I think I've been struggling with. So, I don't know about you, but as an artist who doesn't do art full time, it's so hard to do art. <laughs> um, when you have so much other obligations um you go to school or you work during the day it's so hard to find time to do art and if you are like me and you like to put your art on social media you know that if you don't post often then you don't grow <laughs> and you don't have time to post often <laughs> um then it's just really not working out for you and I feel like that happens to me. I've been learning recently for, for a long time. It's for a few years, it's not recent. How I don't want to be um, subjected to that, you know. I really just love art. And I think I love art more than recognition at this point. Um, so as much as i'd like to draw 24 hours a day a day i don't have that time and i think my pieces do take me a long time to do it takes me a considerable long time to do because i've um decided in my heart that i didn't want to rush it i didn't want to rush it because i used to rush it i used to rush art so um so much just because i wanted to meet a quota of getting um one piece out per day or some crap like that or um one piece uh, one video of every day. and i've decided that i just want to do art that makes me happy and that can take me months <laughs> that can take me months in between all of the other responsibilities i have in between um all of the other hobbies i have because yeah art's not the only thing i love <laughs> Unfortunately, it's one of my main priorities, but it's not my only priority of, of um, hobbies. And yeah, so making time for all of these things is difficult. And I've been slowly but surely stopped um, beating on myself for not doing it often as I think I need to. And just doing it, just doing it for fun, you know? Because I think 
there is a fine line between doing any hobby and posting it on the internet and knowing when it's a hobby and when it has become a job and i think a lot of us treat our leisure activities like jobs and it stopped it stopped giving us it stopped meeting that it stopped giving us that i don't know what to call it but that that thing that it gives us you know that it stopped fulfilling that purpose yeah that purpose of making us happy no it's a chore you know oh i have to do this now or i have to paint today if i don't paint today it's the end of the world but you don't do that for things that you like so for example you might like watching tv you don't say if i don't watch tv at 10 o'clock tonight then oh my gosh it's the end of the world and i feel so bad if i don't watch tv today like what am i doing with my life how could i not watch tv today it's the same way with art that for many of us is a hobby you're like ah, yeah, it's a hobby but you need to post because you want to grow your social media or your youtube or whatever and you're like oh if i don't if I don't paint today, if I don't paint today, if I don't post today, it's the end. It's the end and I'm not doing my I'm not doing things right. You know, I'm not help I'm not I'm not I'm just not performing right. Maybe it's a performance. You do that for your job, <laughs> not for a hobby. And I think that's my problem. I said that art is my hobby and I treat it like it's a job. So it's not fun because I'm trying to meet a deadline or I'm trying to meet a quota or I'm trying to just meet expectations that I've set for myself but these expectations are not suitable or are just they just don't make any sense if it's supposed to be a hobby it's not applicable to this situation so I'm setting work expectations on a hobby yeah and that's my main issue i want to stop in work expectation as a hobby and i feel like when i do that i would do art more so for example you know you have to study for an exam but you're going to go on youtube and watch a bunch of youtube videos because that's probably your hobby it's something you do in your leisure time you procrastinate <laughs> and do youtube and watch youtube in the same way i think i can procrastinate and do art if i actually treated it like a hobby <laughs> and that would be good that means i'll get more art in than i would other things that isn't too important you know so i want to um, set appropriate expectations for my art i probably won't be <laughs> i probably won't be um like other youtubers that post every day i, I I'm, I'm i'm almost sure I won't. <laughs> and i don't think i want to but what i do think it will help with is that i'll do things quicker i'll do things much faster you know if i make it if i truly embrace it as a hobby i'm almost sure i'll be painting pieces that i take a month to paint in a few weeks two weeks or so because I'll be doing it more, so I'll be garnering more experience. And I'll just enjoy doing it, so I'm just going to want to work at it. There was a period of my life where I I just did art like for hours on end, and it was so fun. Now it's like, uh, I have this to do, I have work to do, and sometimes I don't have anything to do, but I'm just sitting and watching YouTube or something. And because I made art a chore, and that's the problem. That's a problem. So if that's you today don't you know you know tailor your expectations appropriately to your hobby if it's a job tailor it appropriately you can't <laughs> you can't or if you want it to become a job treat it as such you can't be treating it as a hobby <laughs> like oh it doesn't matter when i do it, it does matter when you do because it, it's a job or you would like it to become a job but if it's not a job and if you don't see that becoming a job in the foreseeable future like me you just want to continue put, putting out um, your work, you just want to continue getting better, then treat it as such, you know, enjoy what you do. I don't know about other people, but for me, for hobbies that I have 
I do put out considerable effort for it. I want to get better even if I don't intend to get paid for it or I don't intend to for it to be a nine to five. I do want to master it. I, I play the ukulele. I do want to master it and I do put out effort for that. But, you know, it should be fun. It should be fun when I play my ukulele. It should be fun when I paint. It shouldn't feel like a chore. And I think I've mastered that for my ukulele. <laughs> but I, I think I have slowly, I don't know, unmastered that for my art. <laughs> unmastered is a word, but you get the idea. Yeah, so I think I had learned it. And it's like, I don't know, the pressures of life. <sighs> just really affected me so much and now I have not mastered it that much <laughs> yeah so that's the thing that's the thing so I don't know just think about your expectations what are you doing what, what do you want to dedicate your time to and figure out if this is something you want to do to earn money something you want to do for a job or if this is something you just want to do because it's fun and then set appropriate expectations oh here what i'm doing here it's not gonna happen i want it to be like it there is a building probably like one of those old churches where light is coming through the windows and it's shining on him and i'm like no this is not happening uh it didn't look right it didn't look good <laughs> at all but yeah we're almost done we're almost done. This is the longest voice note I have ever done. And I'm proud of myself. I want to start doing more. I want to start dedicating more time to um, my videos. So I do hope you like it. Um, yeah, like and subscribe for more. Like and subscribe for more. Write in the comment section, do you want art to be a hobby? Or do you want it to be a job? And talk about whether or not you think your expectations are appropriate for um, what you hope for art to be. Yeah, so do do put that down below. Or what is your hobby and do you want to turn your hobby into a job? Put that in the comment section below. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll leave you to the rest of the speed paint, but it's almost done. Here I'm using some blue. I love blue. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. I do, I do. Alright guys, so have a great day. Keep painting, keep trying. And just keep doing what you do. Keep doing it. Don't stop. Alright guys, so see you. Bye.